I first ran across one of your paintings down in Melbourne. I think you showed the Niagara Galleries with Bill Nuttall. Yep. And it was a very interesting painting because it had a sort of image of what looked like a travel poster from Cairo. It almost looked like the sort of thing that might have been on the side of, a, of one of those old bags, those old Louis Vuitton yes, bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was also that idea of two of things. And we have one of your paintings uh, behind you here. Again, you've done a, a diptych. You've incorporated imagery that may have come from the time you've spent up in, in Asia, and you might like to talk about that. But there's also two of each of these girls, and the girls seem to be extracted from perhaps old posters. I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about your own paintings, where some of the iconography comes from. Well. I think there's a relationship, you know, I was talking before about, you know, pop art in the 60s mm -hmm. and that graphic nature of pop art I found interesting We things are taken from the media or advertising or whatever that allow, give licence to the use of colour and flattening out things to a certain degree. That aspect is very much inherent in poster work and, yes. and historical posters. So you see, I very much like uh, some of the early British posters, you know, the early part of the 20th century. But also, you know, a lot of the Asian posters, a lot of the Chinese posters going back to the 30s and the 40s, I find really fascinating as well. And, and they are about selling things. You know, when you, look, when you look at some of those early posters, they're about selling products and so on and so forth. But yet they're, they're beautifully constructed and they have a, an inherent charm because of the, you know, the, you know, the subject matter and the pretty girls that are integrated uh, you know, into them and the gestures that they, they hold. So I guess I've found that interesting because it, it embraces sort of a, an aesthetic element in the work in constructing a, a narrative, but it also overlaps into a time frame, you know, so it, it's hard There's to There's a sense of to, nostalgia. In there is a little bit of a, yeah. a, a sense of nostalgia, yeah. yeah. So and it's I've, a sort of pop art which is reasonably contemporary but looking but, back. But looking back. Yeah, very okay. much. And the Chinese fan and the fruit that is painted on the fan, they're beautiful. Is there a story there? Uh, look, it's really just the image in the sense that it's about the, you know, the structure, the pictorial, the formal pictorial structure of the, of the work. I did a series. The original idea for this came from some little drawings in a notebook and it was initially a half fan with two girls on it and then I thought uh, I, I really want the balance of spreading that fan out so that so I developed it into a diptych and it really was the compositional structure but in the elements that go into the work it's not simply looking at a fan and thinking that's got everything I want for the painting you know I bought some fans and just looked at the at how they were structured and photographed them and drew them but the fruit on this comes from something else. I think it comes from a bowl. So they're quite eclectic in that I, I like the colour of the fruit and the structure of the fruit, and I've taken that from something I can't remember exactly. And I've integrated that onto the fan, and then I've integrated the figures onto the top of the fan. So it's, it's an amalgam of different sort of influences that I've pieced together. I understand you work fairly slowly. Uh, do you work off a combination of images that you've pulled from posters and photos and, and, and perhaps uh, real life bowls sitting in front of you and how much planning goes into the construction of the painting versus perhaps working off smaller s sketches as you've just mentioned um, where you may have resolved a lot of the things already and then it's just a matter of, of, of blowing it up. Yeah. I, I think the time frame from the concept, you know, having an idea about what you might want to build into a painting to the actual completing or starting the painting and then completing the painting can, can take ages. So I, I can sit on an idea for a long time before it sort of materialises, you know, into a painting. So, you know, that time frame can be, you know, can be a couple of years. And because the paintings take quite a long time to make, the ideas come faster than you know, I've got time to paint them. So at times it, it is a matter of being quite selective with, with 
what I put together, you know, what I develop into, into the paintings. Another one of your paintings is two dogs that are sort of facing each other, and you've called it double happiness, which obviously in China, Chinese culture has a quite specific meaning. Would you like to talk about how the image or iconography of that painting came about and what some of the ideas were there? That painting's a second painting. I did a, an earlier painting. It was again a diptych of that dog, and it is one single dog yeah. that I've reversed in different ways. And the initial painting, it wasn't terribly large, but it was two panels and the dogs were inverted. So the sides of the dogs touched on the edge of the painting. So it, it had a, a motion that moved into the centre and then out again. And I was quite happy with the painting. But what I was keen to explore with the painting you're talking about, the double happiness, was not so much the positive components of the dog, but the negative space that sat within and around the dogs. Okay. Uh, so it was, it's kind of like that abstract sort of component of the negative space that contains the, the positive forms. So that internal space where the tails touch and the noses touch right. is really you know, quite a significant part of that, that painting. How much do you allow yourself to play with the painting once it's got started? Or is it a case of, here it is, I've got it in my head now, it's sort of a matter of, sort of filling in the colours and getting the colour. You spend a lot of time mixing the colours you mentioned. You have yeah. a very large palette which yeah. has a trail of memory of how you've arrived at certain colours. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of experimentation there, but not necessarily in terms of the imagery. Yeah, the composition's very important. So the, that time frame of considering a work and planning it out is really important. I mean, I've had a number of occasions where I've you know, started a painting, spent a lot of time on the painting and then realised that the problem is just the structure, you know, the pictorial structure isn't working, you know, that composition is not working. Then so make a sculpture. So then I <laughs> cut, cut it up into sculpture. That's exactly how it came about. Yeah. You know, that notion of being reasonably certain with the composition and then, you know, that becomes the platform to play with these other things like colour mixing. And Colour's important to you. I mean, you're in this painting using black to really push out the warmer you know, yellows and browns and oranges. The pinks are, are quite shocking against that black background. Mm. Uh, and you've used that device a couple of, in a couple of other paintings, I think. Yeah. How do you see colour and what are you trying to get out of colour? I think if there's something about the work that I've done over a long period of time that's been significantly consistent throughout has been that the way that I use colour and that the priority that I give to colour mixing. I don't use a massive array of, of, of colour and mixing colour you know, with paint is a little bit like that. It's amazing how far you can extract and extend colour through that mixing process. So you know, a black isn't a black, it's, it's made up of lots of different colour and it can be warm or cool, it can be subtle, it can be it can be strongly contrasting. So all of those things I think are really, really important. And you mentioned that you spend a lot of time thinking about the titles. The titles do seem to be quite meaningful yep. and very important to the work. So how do you go through that? Are you thinking of the title as you put the painting together or is it something that comes it's, after you've finished it? It's a combination of those things. Okay. So occasionally I can construct a painting because I want to put certain components together. And there are times when it becomes a struggle to get the title that works well. But there are occasions where the title comes first and you want to build a painting around. Again, sometimes the title aspect takes a little while to come, you know, come to, to terms with. How do you think your role as a teacher has actually impacted your painting? I think there is a strong influence. I say that because there are a lot of things that you engage with students about and Sure, there's, there's directing and helping students to work their way th through things, but part of that interaction, it's a collegial interaction. I see it as two artists talking together. It's that sort of professional engagement of, of two creative people that are talking about the same thing, that creative process of making something. So you've, you've got to stay true to your, your beliefs right. when you're talking to students in that sense and encouraging them you know, with their own work. So. Terry, thank you very much for spending some time with me this morning and I found it very, very interesting. Very much looking forward to uh, having your show in October with Ted Powell. It's interesting that you're both Brits, yes. but really <laughs> at heart Aussies. 
and uh, his style of painting quite different. Uh, he has uh, been up in Hong Kong uh, in the studio here uh, painting uh, the Hong Kong uh, landscape. Um, uh, he, but you, your respective work seem to come together in this show, uh, which is why we're calling it uh, Four Points of the Compass. And um, I'm very, very excited uh, to see how it all comes together. And thank you uh, for coming in this morning. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Great. Thanks, Great. Is that all right? <laughs>